the single male who wishes to end his solitary existence. Whether it be the desire to end it permanently or just for a few hours, we hope that somewhere in our story there's the perfect remedy for each and every available man. to succeed with the ladies, although negative extremes in any of these departments can be somewhat burdensome. The three main ingredients for success with the opposite sex are confidence, confidence and confidence. Of course, ladies of all ages will scan their prospective suitors for acceptable outward appearance. So although it means certain sacrifices at the tailors, the sheep-like behaviour of wearing the fashion of the day is unfortunately in order. Remember, she'll look firstly at your shoes, then your eyes and your teeth before finally giving you the complete once-over. And all this in a fraction of a second. You'll never even realise she's looked at you. Make no mistake though, she certainly has. However, don't let this minor inconvenience deter you. Providing you're clean, tidy and looking your best, the rest is simple. The main reason she's out tonight is not because she's thirsty. She wants you as much as you want her, so fight those butterflies and prepare for action. Chatting up the ladies or getting to know female strangers, however you wish to describe this pastime, will usually be done in the evening at a pub, club or some other social venue. Weddings are also good hunting grounds because ice breaking is less necessary amongst friends. There are exceptions to these. For example, the supermarket, the library, even in the street. But these are the exceptions rather than the rule. And although our advice during this program can be of assistance in some of these unusual times and locations, the bulk of our suggestions are much less likely to be of use during daylight hours action. Capture of prey in a library, for example, requires a great deal of luck, as a contrived approach in such a studious atmosphere would stand out like the proverbial sore thumb. Pulling a bird here is more likely to depend on that horrible word, sincerity. There are shortcuts to success with the opposite sex. For example, one option is to become a man of the cloth. Hmm, perhaps not. Anyway, let's get back to reality and concentrate on the public house or disco pickup. Oh, incidentally, should you ever find yourself in a strange town, never ask girls where all the life is. They will invariably send you to a pub full of men. 
Always consult young, with it looking males if you want the best night out. Before we explore actual ploys, it's worth noting that the crucial time to go in for the kill is towards closing time. Time, gentlemen, please. Initial groundwork can be done earlier, but remember, boys, a penny bun will cost you tuppence after you've successfully pulled. So let's start with groundwork. Firstly, you need to let her know you're there, although 99% of the time, unless she's hopelessly in love with her boyfriend or you look like an estate agent, she'll already have noticed you. The best way to confirm this mutual knowledge is the use of a simple smile. Wait till she catches your eye and then give her the politest and briefest of friendly smiles, taking care not to overdo it or look like an ogler. Another golden opportunity never to be missed is to stand close to her when ordering your drinks. When the barmaid is getting your order, turn to the quarry and make some mild innocuous complaint about the pub or service. I'll just have a pint of lager then, please. So you never get what you want these days, do you? Knowing what not to do can be as important as knowing what to do. My mate fancies you. Girls hate this. They hate this even more. Hello there. Do you come here often then? Far too obvious. Dressed as a clown, he may have got away with it. Excuse me, um, could I buy you a drink, please? Got one, may work in the United States, but not over here, I'm afraid. All these lame brains will doubtless be engaged to fat henpeckers in the near future. very few occasions, a bought drink done in the right way can be accepted as professional. And, uh, <coughs> and uh, get a rum and black car for this girl with a cold over here. For that nasty cold, do you the world a good? The prospective puller must be ruthless at all times and think only of his own aims. Genuine compassion is for wimps. Artificial compassion can be a great boon, however, and should one ever be in the enviable position of being present when a girl faints or is taken ill, being first on the scene and calming everybody down is probably the best point-scoring situation you're ever likely to be presented with. Some knowledge of first aid is advantageous, but a few well-chosen phrases like don't panic or give her some air will make you look like a professional until real help arrives. Your efforts will have been clocked by every female in the pub, and when all the fuss has died down, you simply wait for the congratulations and consequently the openings. Of course, these are one-off situations and cannot be contrived. They require being in the right place at the right time, but the good opportunist always has an eye for this type of opening. One can contrive to be in the right place at the right time, and sometimes the direct approach works. Hey, excuse me, my name's Nigel. I've just seen you walking past here all the time. Oh, and, uh, I... oh well, some you win, some you lose. But sometimes it doesn't. In a perfect world, we could make known our intentions and save all this fuss and bother of ice-breaking. But this is not a perfect world, and see what happens when we use a straightforward, honest approach. Excuse me, ladies. My friend and I would like to engage in conversation with you with a view to getting to know you better and maybe even getting off with you. <laughs> no, the female of the species has to disguise the fact that she knows she soon may be deflowered. The rules of the game must strictly be adhered to. Remember, She's only there for a drink and a laugh with her chums. She'd never admit to being there purely for the opposite sex, not even to herself. 
us men must play along with this silly charade. Until now, our program has dealt with matters of basic common sense. Much of what has been set up to now is fairly obvious to the average male. The next part of this video is where the secrets will be given away. For that reason, would any ladies present between the ages of 16 and 26, or wall right will be generous between the ages of 16 and 30, please leave the room now. Thank you. Okay, men, here goes. Ploy number one is the ignoring or negative cell ploy. This requires two attractive females sitting together at a table where there are other seats unoccupied and go something like this. The golden rule here is not even to cast the merest of glances towards the girls once you've sat down. Talk confidently to your male friend, totally ignoring your quarry. When you asked for the spare seats, they assumed they knew what was coming. Now they're somewhat bemused. Within a few minutes, they'll be listening to your every word and be like putty in your hands. Usually, they will break the ice for you, thus putting you in a very strong position. Women think they love being chased by men. In fact, they get more pleasure, although they don't usually realize this, from being the chasers. One of the main objects of this video is to show you how to get her to chase you. From a position of being pursued, it's just a matter of time before her knickers are decorating your bedroom carpet. The vast majority of men waste a fortune on flowers and chocolates. These men are of no concern whatsoever to pullers and offer scant competition. In fact, by using a little common sense, we can even help eat some of the chocolates for them. The uninitiated female loves a rascal, hence the age-old adage, treat him mean and keep him keen. Knowing how to interpret this saying and how to put it into practice is the key to a successful career in the love game. Our second ploy plays on the biggest female weakness of all, gossip. Remember, guys, she's a sucker for other people's business and will leave the male of the species for dead when it comes to nosiness. Ploy number two is the overhearing ploy. There are numerous ways in which we can put this ploy into action and exploit our prey's nosy nature. In this first example, one of our pullers has sent his friend to sit close to the intended victims. How are you doing, mate? Oh, How are you? I ain't seen you for ages. Oh, well, you've been away, haven't you? You've been in Hong Kong for... What? Incidentally, it should go without saying that with this ploy, always ensure that you and your friend haven't previously been seen together. Again, as with most of our ploys, the golden rule is not to look at the girls. The slightest glance in their direction will blow your strategy and render it useless. You can talk as loudly as you like and get as close to the girls as it is humanly possible to get, providing you pretend to be unaware of their presence. Don't worry, if your dialogue is interesting enough, they will open the conversation with you. Sometimes the need to create a fake meeting between you and your accomplice is not necessary, and your bait conversation can begin as both of you move closer to your chosen females. Here are some more ideas. So I heard you got a new job then. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. There's a traffic warden. Shh! Don't tell anybody. <laughs> Come on, I love your book then. Um, well, I did book a little old lady. She got only got 30 seconds to go. <laughs> she arrived at the car. She got a shopping trolley, right? <laughs> got a shopping trolley. So I slapped the ticket on. Just, <laughs> just before she Hmm, could be a bit of a love-hate relationship developing here, we think. Is it true that in medical school you actually had to cut up dead bodies? Well, oh, keep your voice down. Yeah, well, <laughs> we do practice when we're in medical school, we do cut up dead bodies for yeah. the operations. But uh, Girls feel confident or relaxed I mean, no if they think they're know. in the hands of a professional. Trouble is, the professional in this case is no more than a professional puller. I've had a couple of teenagers on the slab. 
<laughs> anyway, I've got this great joke to tell you too. I heard it last week. Not another one. It's about this little lad and his father's taking him a walk. And, and A great idea here. Tell a joke to your partner in crime. The steamier, the better. She'll strain to hear the punchline. <laughs> Remember, the more controversial your conversation, the sooner the quarry will be won over. Always look surprised when they join into your conversation and make sure you apologize for talking too loud. Never pursue a lost cause. If they refuse to play the game, simply move on. There's always a right time to quit, and providing you haven't offered them a glance, this can be done with dignity. They won't even guess what you were up to. Hmm, obviously a pair of lesbians. A great one-liner when time is tight is, Get your coat, love, you've pulled. But perhaps the most common way of meeting a girl in a social setting is by means of the introduction. Although this offers much less of a challenge and provides less entertainment and fun, it's nevertheless an important addition to your repertoire and another way of capturing new conquests. A good tip is to introduce any female you already know to one of your male friends. One day he could do the same for you. Many times you'll see a girl you know speaking with an attractive girl you don't know. Speak to the girl you know. Invariably, she'll introduce you to her friend. Once in conversation with any girl, be firm, charming and friendly, but always tell her rather than ask her if you want anything. For example, if you want a date with her. When I take you out next week, I want you to wear just what you've got on now. Because you look dead right. The wrong way to go about getting a date in a one-to-one -one situation goes something like this. What are you doing on Tuesday? Tuesday? Oh, that's um, a red at night. Wednesday? Um, washing my hair Wednesday. Thursday? Thursday, girls night out. Well, how about Friday then? A complete bundle of nerves who's destined to need his electric blanket tonight. Of course, you can always save yourself the inconvenience of a costly date by telling her she'll have to have black coffee back at your place because you've run out of milk. An important word of warning. If ever you should feel true love rearing its ugly head, bail out immediately. This soppy emotion can lead to all manner of problems and inconveniences. When love arrives, all good sense goes out of the window. It could easily be misconstrued at this stage that we advocate the female sex as being the opposition, or at worst, even the enemy. Nothing could be further from the truth. We're not misogynists. Women are wonderful. A little gullible, perhaps, but wonderful just the same. All we want for them is to get what they deserve. You. Still on the subject of introductions, should you ever find yourself introduced to a girl who you really don't fancy and she's becoming a little clingy, there is a simple remedy which gets you off the hook with no unpleasantness or awkward situation arising. Simply look at her a little cross-eyed. No one except her will see what you're doing and she'll exit the scene faster than Damon Hill gets out of the pits. What you've done is put the onus on her. No girl wants to be pulled by someone who's got one eye on her left ear and the other looking out of the window. Once free of Miss Clingy, you can concentrate on more suitable prey. Another golden rule to obey at all times is never to pull a neighbour or anyone you have to work with. This is a common mistake with inexperienced young studs, and it always ends in misery. If you do get an irresistible offer at work, try to ensure she gets a transfer to some other department where your paths are unlikely to cross again. Better still, see that she leaves the company. If you're given a uniform for your job, pluck up the courage to be seen out and about wearing it once in a while. Uniforms are a real turn-on for the young ladies. Try to avoid dancing. 
except of course the body to body smooch at the end of the night. when on the dance floor, but guys resemble hairdressers, and in modern dancing they either look clumsy or ridiculous, and their reputation as a John Travolta is blown to all and sundry. Sometimes the male dancer looks both clumsy and ridiculous. Besides, getting a girl onto the dance floor usually requires a humble request, not to be recommended under any circumstances. And don't become the uninvited dancer. He's a real donkey. Should a girl ask you to dance, unless she's an absolute cracker, when the minor inconvenience of waving your body around like a windmill for three minutes is excusable, avoid her advances. This can be done by agreeing initially to her request and then leading her onto the dance floor with a distinct limp. She will now feel awkward and your escape from this point is plain sailing. Once you've broken the ice and have won your intended's undivided attention, there comes the question of what to talk about. The answer to this is simple. Anything. Providing, of course, it's nothing to do with religion, politics, architecture, railway timetables, accountancy, horticulture, taxidermy, classic cars, refrigerators, economics, TV repairs, computers, ingrowing toenails and pigeon fancying. Oh, and by the way, never refer to her as a spinster even though that is her true designation. Also, don't get bogged down with too much small talk. This can lead to panic. Hiya. Hello. You all right? Yeah, good. And you? I'm fine. It's been a nice day today, hasn't it? Um, yeah, it's been lovely. Yeah, they, uh, they say it'll be a nice day tomorrow as well. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's really good. Mm. It's been for shit, then. Oh, dear. Seriously, though, a great topic to keep her attention is astrology. Anything mystic and she'll be all ears. Women love gossip, and if you steer the conversation towards their own personal problems, you're really onto a winner. Never over-compliment her. Women have grovelers for breakfast. She'll wait all night for you to sing her praises, but you'll lose her attention if ever you do. A woman loves to talk about herself, and once the touch paper is alight, you can relax and watch her burbling on and on as you mentally prepare for her forthcoming fate. Just nod and smile in the right places, and you're home and dry. For the absolute bastard, there's always the sympathy approach. Invent a story. Tell her you've recently lost a favorite aunt, grandmother, or best of all, a beloved pet. Be strong in your loss, but relish the speed with which her comforting arm can appear around your shoulder. Once physical contact is achieved, the rest is up to you. Comfort should also be taken by the older puller, because 5% of young females love the mature man. Trouble is, they don't wear badges, so words like needles and haystack spring to mind. For the fresh air lover, a dog can certainly be man's best friend. He'll get you more introductions than you can count. But back to the social situation. Without doubt, the thing most men find hardest of all is the initial approach, the breaking of the ice. Strangers could be anyone. We've no idea how they'll react. Usually, though, we can get away with a lot more than we imagine. My mate reckons he can make your tits move without touching them. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> yeah, it's true, I can't, honestly. It's true. No. Yeah, honestly. No. Go on. Go on. Bet your 50p. Bet your 50p I can make your tits move without touching them. Go on. No. <laughs> 
Go on then. Go on then. Go oh, on I'll make you fix it. You can't. This titillating but very daring boy <laughs> is not recommended for the faint hearted. Lost again. Most girls are fun loving, but this would push many of them over the cliff edge. All pullers at some time during their career will suffer the dreaded KB or knock back. Being snubbed not only clubbers the confidence, but it can be seen by others around you. However, if you do get snubbed, try to bounce back straight away. Don't take your sorrows with you to the fish and chip shop. That's how many failed pullers end up as men of restricted slimness. Try to make sure first what you're getting into. Don't bite off more than you can chew. As previously stated, it's always best if you can get her to approach you. But sometimes the music may be a little loud for the overhearing trick, so a visual effort is needed to test the temperature. Wait till she's looking in your general direction, and then do something like this. Or this. Girls love a good laugh, and if you can bring a smile to their faces, you're more than halfway there. They may not be sugar and spice fellows, but they're all we've got. Their attention can be drawn in other, less humorous ways. For example, the wearing of two wristwatches. 95% of the people who ask you why you adopt this unusual practice will be male. It's the other 5% we're interested in. Avoid ogling, by the way. You'll make her feel uneasy and look like a dirty old man. Sometimes a snap decision is required. You may find yourself walking towards an absolute cracker. Turn to your friend and say, John! There is such a thing as love at first sight. Yeah. <laughs> if she shares a smile with you, you're in with a chance. If you try this in a pub, a good follow-up line is to whisper in her ear, if you stay sober tonight, I'll take you home. Another ploy which falls into this category goes something like this. Ah, oh, girls, you found us at last. You must have looked everywhere for us. <laughs> Don't hang about if this very upfront ploy doesn't get a favourable response. It's an all-or-nothing approach. If you know her a little bit, but not all that well, try, how's my second favourite person in the whole world? She will react in the obvious way and ask, who's your favourite person? You then make up the conversation as you go along. The main thing is, you spurred on a reaction, and reaction leads to conversation. Many times you're likely to find yourself in a group situation where both sexes are present. The successful puller here is much more likely to be the cheerful, optimistic chap rather than the smooth, silent one. Without going over the top and becoming the proverbial court jester, the good fun male is usually a winner with the ladies. The ones putting on the Arnold Schwarzenegger act are seldom even noticed. The majority of women are small-minded and advertise their marital status with a ring similar to that worn by a racing pigeon. This will be worn on a specific finger and is mostly there for ostentatious reasons. If the ring looks fairly new, it's best to look elsewhere for your quarry. But a well-worn ring, if you'll pardon the expression, displayed in the pub or disco, should be treated as an invite rather than a deterrent. A quick check round that she's not with male company and then move in. Incidentally, avoid the non-ring wearing older spinster type girls. The only pleasure they're ever likely to get is saying no. At this point in our program, should any of you ladies who didn't take our earlier advice still be watching, here's a useful tip for you. Girls look about 55 times more filthy when wearing a skirt or a dress. Why this should be, heaven knows, but virtually without exception, all men will tell you this. 
Leggings are the biggest turn-off. So girls, if you want a peaceful night, you know what to wear. Men are easily fooled by attire. For example, a miniskirt can make even the worst Doris look reasonable. And a flowing gown can easily disguise the fact that a beached whale lies hidden beneath. Most men are really children at heart, and the thought of responsibility and growing up is certainly not approached with alacrity. A good puller plays on these childlike emotions and does not repress them. In fact, he takes advantage of them if he's going to win over the opposite sex. She'll love the roguish, juvenile approach and treat him as something of a challenge. His challenge, however, lies deep beneath the layers of lingerie. For most of our programme, we've dealt with the social setting of a pub, club or discotheque. People attending these venues know they're not going to a business meeting, so providing you're not the elephant man and she hasn't got a face like Woody Allen, you shouldn't find too many obstacles to thwart your quest. Outside of these obvious pulling places, however, there are numerous situations and locations where the dirty deed can also be contemplated. Some of the best captures take place on trains, buses, supermarkets, even in the street. The captive counter-assistant, for example, is screaming out to be entertained. A few jovial remarks here can lead to all sorts of naughty things. And behind closed doors. Universities can present some of the most fruitful experiences too. After all, there's nothing like a bit of intellectual nookie. Everywhere in public life there are girls who are ripe for the taking. All it takes is you, a little nose, and that old favourite, confidence. A great tip when travelling on a train, bus or plane is to carry a dud biro. Start writing a letter or something, then curse your useless pen. Shake it profusely, making sure your target has seen you. Politely ask if you can borrow hers. Girls always carry a pen. Once more, ice has been broken. Never let your wife or girlfriend deter your exploits. If you see something you fancy, find an excuse to leave the missus for a few minutes and simply rise to your new challenge. Excuse me, love. As soon as my divorce comes through, I want you to be my first date. <laughs> a good puller never misses an opportunity. A bad puller is all talk, no action, and collects nothing but a lot of telephone numbers. Girls are never impressed by a ditherer. Whatever you say to a girl, it must be said with aplomb. <laughs> it's good here, isn't it? <laughs> The same line delivered by a ditherer might go something like this. Good air, isn't it? <laughs> Another amateur doomed to total failure. Remember, you have only one opportunity to get it right. There are no second chances in this game. Sometimes both you and your male accomplice may fancy the same girl. Competition is healthy, but in a case like this, let her choose. Never resort to the toss of a coin. Tools of the trade are relatively few. The correct attire is always favourable, although some items of adornment need more looking after than others. Other than this, a convenient means of transport and a warm bed are all that's necessary. Junior pullers may have to double up and use their vehicle as a makeshift bed, but this is neither recommended nor comfortable. A couple of pints of Dutch Courage are an optional extra, but beware, these can be fatal if over-imbibed on. When I take you out, 
he's trying too hard. Never show off or pose too much. Contrary to popular belief, mobile phones and other yuppie accessories are not passports to success. In fact, they probably border on the ridiculous to most women. The only girls he's likely to get are out of a catalogue. You don't have to end up as one of those sad people who get their dates out of a newspaper. Only reveal what sort of car you own if she pesters you. Even then, play down the Porsche or the Lamborghini. If you have a Skoda or Lada outside in the car park, however, leave it there and order a taxi. It's preferable to go back to her place, but if this isn't possible, try to come to an arrangement with a trusted male friend to exchange flats. This way, she will have difficulty finding you again in the event of any unexpected offspring resulting from your encounter. If she does come to your place, cover the telephone number with a nice picture so that she can't scribble down your number whilst you're in the kitchen making coffee. Evening classes and courses away from home offer excellent opportunities for meeting new conquests. But without doubt, holiday time is the best opportunity you're ever likely to get for that quick lay. Overseas holidays are particularly recommended. She may have a fiancé back at home, but this is her last chance for a final fling. You can help her fulfil this dream. Whenever possible, try to pull her the night before she goes home. She's more likely to be receptive then, and you haven't got to walk round with the lovesick wench on your arm for two weeks. Finishing with any conquest after the deed is done, or pressing button B as it's known in the trade, requires tact, skill and nerve above and beyond the call of duty. However, that's another story, so sorry boys, that's your problem. Our aim in this video has been to show you how to pull the birds. The consequences are down to you. The bulk of you lads are just after her naughty bits, and quite rightly so. After all, that's the only reason she was built that way. However, there will be some of you out there, possibly a few accountants and train spotters, who have designs on that dreadful M word. Marriage. <laughs> Our advice on matrimony is simple, don't. Once the deeds have been signed, she'll show her true colours. <laughs> Be a man, it's not too late. You could have all three of these if you stayed single. There's lots of time left for settling down when you're old. And when should that be? Is there a right time for a gigolo to hang up his pulling suit for the last time? Some say that he should retire when pubic hairs start growing out of his ears. Others say it's when the candles start weighing more than the cake. However, our advice on the subject is never. Once a puller, always a puller. Only when they're nailing down the coffin lid should you finally admit defeat. Hold on, though. What if there is an afterlife? Sunday? Well, what about the week after next? <laughs>